my school arranged for um, to work in, in my local hospital. So I worked in the obstetrics department there, which is essentially, um, you know, pregnant women. So I saw quite a few C-sections in that work experience and, you know, got to know um, the team there. And that was that was actually probably my first experience of medicine. So that was in year 10. So growing up, um, I would say I wanted to be all of these things. <laughs> um, so scientist, physics, uh, theoretical physics, probably engineering, and as well as being being a doctor. So I, you know, throughout throughout school, I was probably thinking I like these things. Um, yeah, obviously heavily influenced by like TV shows and, and things like that. So yeah, that that's kind of where I was going. So for choosing my GCSEs, I think I chose what I, what I found interesting. And that was the, the three sciences, geography, psychology, and Spanish. I really, really liked the languages. I worked really hard um, and I, I did have really good teachers as well. Um, and I found that maths was actually a struggle for me. I really, really struggled with it. And I was actually, I would think I was, I was predicted I um, think a B for a lot of my subjects at GCSE and but I remember going home and thinking I, I really need to get a good grade for maths and I would I remember taking the higher tier book home and, and studying from that and actually the next day going and asking my teachers about you know all the questions that I had so I worked really hard I remember you know I remember spending hours on you know um, on on this so I was predicted mainly Bs and then, but mainly because of my mock exams, I think I did quite bad in them. And then, um, you know, I think I, I, I think I even failed quite a few mock exams, <laughs> but then when it came to the real thing, I studied really hard for it and ended up getting 10 GCSEs, A star and A, um, which I was really pleased with. And my teachers were all quite shocked as well. So I was really pleased with that. I think I just wanted to talk to you all about my principles. So I, I have what I call um, a set of life principles that I follow and um, things that I've just developed over time. And one of them is just to take everyone's opinion with a pinch of salt and that not everyone is correct, even though they seem to be. So this might be your parents, this might be your teachers, even your friends. They might have opinions. Um, for example, for me, I was predicted these, um, I was predicted different grades than what I got and actually did so much better. So that was the first probably lesson is that, um, you know, just take everyone's opinion with a pinch of salt. So for my A-levels, I chose uh, biology, chemistry, physics and Spanish and it was about in early year 12, I decided that I wanted to do medicine um, and was interested in it. And I worked towards it, just knowing that even if I worked towards it and I changed my mind, then at least I had that experience. So my work experience, I did quite a few placements. I know that this is, this is a sticking point in terms of finding work experience. So I will, I will talk about that. And if you have any questions, just let me know. So I did six months at my local care home. And that was, um, I just, I think I, I think I turned up there and just said, you know, my friend and I just want to come every sort of weekend. And I think we, we uh, manned the reception desk and then we, you know, gave tea and coffee to the residents. So that was actually really fun. Um, and then we did, and then I did two weeks at a radiology department. The way I found that was primarily through emailing uh, various hospitals, the admin departments. I think I sent about 50 emails and maybe got one reply back. Um, so, and that was that one department there. The next one was uh, two weeks at a GP surgery. Um, and then there should be another one under there as well, but it's not on there for some reason. But um, I also did two weeks at a urology. So I did a two week surgical uh, placement as well. 
so the way I got that was actually through school and uh, someone in the network at school had knew a doctor um, so they kindly came in and did interview practice with us and he then um, let he then let me go and uh, shadow him for a couple of weeks and incidentally his wife was a GP so then I shadowed her after that so that was actually really useful um, and that was primarily through my school. I was actually advised um, so during my work experience that was a really good time to speak to doctors and find out what it was like in their career and a lot of them actually really love their jobs but then equally a lot of them didn't <laughs> um quite a few actually said to not go into medicine but um they were they were quite junior like me and it can be it can be tough you know it, it can be difficult um but there are good things as well which we'll talk about and also during that time i did a lot of reading around the subject as well to help prepare myself Okay, just a couple of questions that have popped up as you're going through the work yeah. experience actually around required A-levels. It's good to think, ask things as we're going along. So I was just asking about the A-levels that are required to go into medicine. I think there's some confusion on whether or not you need maths, do you need chemistry and biology, will just chemistry do, things yeah. like that. Yeah, so when I was applying, it was, um, it was the sciences. So it was biology, chemistry, and it was either maths or or physics um but it actually varied depending on the uni so what i would say is have a look at the universities but usually they they almost always need biology and chemistry for a levels um and then the rest is just so long as you have three or maybe four but definitely three um so have a look on the on the websites for that because they do change depending on the uni and just another question on your reading around the subject from the slide you just on. Just a question about what kind of reading materials did you go for? Was it around the discipline of medicine you wanted to do or just being a doctor in general? So um, the main reading I did was actually, so I went on, on Amazon and I searched getting into medical school and there were a few books that I read. So one of them was an interview practice book and that it's the, it's the main interview practice book that I actually used for that and that has loads of um, sort of snippets of information that's really handy for uh, things to read around or things to know that's quite good to get into early as well because it's a huge book I mean I think it's like 200 pages or something so I, I had a look through that I didn't finish it and then another one was I think I read a, a very short short book on medical ethics um, that was the main thing Again, I don't think I finished that either. <laughs> um, but then reading sort of science topics. So read, reading around the diseases that I had, uh, I had read about in my A-levels as well. Brilliant, thank you for that. Okay, I'll just move on to the next slide. Sure, so my school was, my school was supportive. Um, like I said, they helped with the practice interviews and they also helped me a lot with my personal statements so i think i did excuse me i think i i think i had so many drafts of my personal statement i mean the personal statement is it is hard definitely i remember being there and i remember thinking gosh you know you're being judged on based on a few paragraphs it it's not nice um but you get through it and i think i did several edits and made sure to go to only a few people that i trusted um, to edit that. Next was choosing my universities. So I only went to a few open days. I think I only went to two. And I actually, my first choice was UCL. And I, I was, I remember speaking to a teacher of mine that I um, really liked. And he actually said to me, look, Booker, I don't think you should apply for UCL. I don't think you'll get in. And I remember hearing that and actually being quite upset <laughs> because this was my first choice university. Um, and here was someone that I really respected telling me, you know, don't, don't do it. Cause you know, it's just, it's, it would just be a waste basically. I ended up doing one BMAT 
and three UK CAT universities. So for those of you who don't know, the BMATs and the UK CAT are um, pre-admission tests that you need to do. I think uh, they, they probably have changed from my time when I did it, um, but I think quite a few universities still do require them. So I had a bit of a spread um, with my unis. The BMAT that I did actually went really badly. Um, I remember leaving and thinking, gosh, you know, I think I don't think I did that well. But actually, when I got the results, you know, I did much better than average. And the same with the UK CAT. So it can seem like at the time it's not going well, but actually, you know, sometimes you, you do much better. Something I know from my experience working with kids who've been applying to university and applying to medicine is exactly that. It's a quite an unpredictable test taking and it can feel like it's not going so well. Okay. Just another question that's popped up while you were talking is if um, you're not getting as much support maybe from school in the process of applying to medicine, are there places you can go to get extra support if your school is maybe not as attuned to su supporting those sorts of applications? Yeah, of course. So um, I'm not sure what, um, I mean, certainly the girls network is certainly one step to helping with that. Um, I think that there are loads of, uh, I think I, for example, I think I just remembered now, but I went to a summer school on getting into medicine as well. That was um, that was paid for as well, I think by my school. But um, yeah, there are loads of sort of outreach type programs available um, in different areas. So that's definitely something worth um, looking into. And if not, we can um, get a list of things actually so do email in if you're struggling with that if your school if you don't feel like you're being supported enough just let us know and we'll, we'll look up those things for you but also have a have a look online as well i think there's loads of outreach things brilliant thank so, you so much pleasure so i did end up getting interview offers which i was so pleased with i i honestly going through the process I think I think this happens but you sometimes lack confidence when you actually shouldn't and uh getting the interview offers for me was just like wow okay people people think I'm good you know I was I was really pleased with it so I got interview offers from Liverpool Cardiff and UCL and I think one other one which I've forgotten just so again we move on from that bit we catch just one question from um quite a few people who privately messaged us just wondering if you had any advice on getting work experience, obviously during the current time of pandemic and how that can be done. Of course, so this is, I, I, I do know about this. There is virtual work experience, which I have heard of some universities doing right now because we, we can't, can't get work experience at the moment, it's very hard. Uh, so there is that, the virtual. Um, I think some universities, don't quote me on this, but maybe maybe taking provisions for that but that is something we, we definitely need to look into for sure also ladies i've had a conversation with um a wonderful guy who actually works in the northwest um for nhs careers and he said he was going to send me some information on virtual work experience in medicine so i'll make sure we track that down and get that to you as a follow-up as well perfect so principle one being through here we go Okay, so principle number two, keep your eyes on the prize. I remember actually um, quite struggling with getting my grades and remember thinking, God, chemistry and physics, this is so hard. How am I gonna do this? So I actually made myself uh, a vision board and I think it was, I think it was like an old Amazon cardboard box or something. I cut it out. I wrote down four A's on it. I printed off UCL's logo, stuck it on and stuck that up on my wall. So I looked at that every day uh, and that just motivated me to get my grades. And most importantly, you, you girls are all so bright that you really can do anything you want. And I, I definitely want you to remember that. So yay, I got my offer from UCL and I was super pleased by that. So why I chose medicine? So this was a very popular question. So many reasons, so many reasons, but 
um, I was good at science, I really enjoyed it. I also did quite a bit of work experience and that helped me to realise what medicine was like and if I liked it. I enjoyed, um, I enjoyed work experience in general as well. And I think it was, it's a real opportunity to make a, make a huge difference to people's lives. And I could really see myself uh, being successful in, in the career. How do you know if it's right for you? The true answer is until you do something, until you do anything, you never know it's right for you. That goes with any career in life. <clears throat> so you always just have to try. But there are some things you can do to help prepare yourself or, or to know beforehand. I think the first thing I, I sort of realised was medicine, a medical degree is always something that's valuable. And I have a lot of colleagues who did their degrees, their medical degree, and then, you know, decided to change and do something different. But actually, their medical degree helped them get into that place. So it's not the end of the world. You can change your mind. Um, it's obviously better if you if you decide earlier and, and don't do it and decide something else. But if you've done it and, and you've gone through that process, then you know it's not it's not in uh, in stone. Um, sorry, Rosie. We'll just um, we'll just go back one. Apologies, being a bit too bit too efficient there. No. Yeah, so I think I actually, I know I did actually touch on that point. Sure, let's go ahead. So at university was a lot harder than expected. I turned up and obviously at my school, I was pretty clever amongst a small cohort of people. And then all of a sudden you're at university, you're surrounded by hundreds of people who are smart, if not smarter than you. It's very overwhelming. Um, and it's a lot of hard work. It, it's hours in the library, hours studying, hours of lectures. I mean, it, it's hard for sure, but it's enjoyable. You know, ultimately I picked the subject that I really enjoyed. During medical school, I did a lot of networking early on. And the great thing about medicine is you get to go to conferences and meet new people. And I remember networking uh, quite early on, and this led to meeting um, meeting colleagues who were really interested in doing research. And I ended up doing uh, doing quite a few publications, so publishing research papers, and then applying for national prizes that I won, and then doing international presentations as well. I think I I flew out to um, Italy quite a few times. Um, so for my final year of medical school, I did a, uh, what's called an elective. So this is quite common amongst most UK universities where in your final year, you, uh, take after doing your final exams, you take a couple of months and you do medicine abroad. So it's really exciting. You get to go anywhere you want, so long as you organize it had colleagues go, friends go all over the world. Um, I chose to do mine in research. So I did a, a research scholarship at, at Harvard Medical School. And I was at a tissue engineering and wound healing lab there. So I was working um, and doing some really cool stuff in the lab and published uh, some research papers there and also published um, in a leading uh, textbook chapter. So I was really pleased with that. That sounds absolutely amazing. A couple of the girls are asking how you found out about those opportunities and so sort of which networks helped you to, to, to gain understanding of the different prizes and the elective options and stuff. Yeah, of course. This is, um, so this is something that I only discovered once in medical school and I essentially just went to uh, conferences that I was interested in. So at the time there were surgical conferences medical conferences that medical students could go to at a discounted price so i would go and speak to either um, consultants or people who were quite senior and and ask them if they had any projects going and would um do would collaborate with them on this and it sort of grows slowly slowly and then you 
it's not a specific thing um but it just sort of as you do that you you find people who who are interested in the same things and then it somehow it grows so through one person I then found the next one and then the next one and it just it kind of just all it all comes together looking back so it's a bit of being brave and looking out definitely that. the day in my life there really is no average day at all <laughs> I wake up early, try to wake up early and uh, exercise if I can. Seeing patients on the ward rounds like I was today. Uh, sometimes I'm clerking patients, so seeing and admitting patients in A&E. There's administration work, some paperwork. I also do part research as well. So I'm writing papers and publishing in, in journals. And I'm currently a junior staff editor as well at uh, the Annals of Medicine and Surgery. So I, I'm involved in that as well. Studying, it is true, studying doesn't stop once you get into medical school. It does continue, um, probably until you are quite senior as well. Um, and actually the learning never stops. Medicine is constantly evolving and there is always new research and new techniques coming out for things. So it's quite, it's quite dynamic in that sense. And also attending courses. So loads and loads of courses, um, for example, like advanced life support courses or, you know, many different things. Fantastic. Just a couple more questions that popped up during that slide. So, um, a couple of the girls asking if there's any particular extracurricular activities you did at school that you think helped your application uh, or helped you to become a good doctor and also asking specifically what field of medicine you work in now. Yeah, so at school I did, I think the main thing is that for your, for the applications they want to see that you're well rounded and that you're not just just interested in science and they want to know that you you have hobbies so for me i did i think i did the duke of edinburgh um i think i did did it up to gold and then i did i think that was the main thing i done did i think i also ran an after school club um and those were the two main things that I did extracurricular. Oh, and I also spoke about languages, of course. So I spoke about um, I spoke about Spanish and Spanish club and how I was involved in that as well. In terms of my my field of medicine at the moment. So right now I'm working in general medicine um, and that is dealing with um, many, many fields within it. So that involves respiratory, cardiology, um, so heart, the lungs, um, renal, so anything inside the body, essentially, so internal medicine. Thank you. There are a lot of challenges, definitely. It involves a lot of hard work, like I said before, and it does take a very long time, definitely. A medical degree is six years long. It does take a while. And it's not like what you see on TV. I did watch a lot of scrubs myself <laughs> and uh, went in thinking, well, great, you know, I'll be like JD and Turk. <laughs> it's not like that. And also the learning never stops. That's either seen as a good or a bad thing. Um, for me, it's a good thing. I think I like, I like to have that, that challenge there. And also I think another thing is lots of competition at all levels. But I think that can be applied to every part of life and every part of uh, every job, actually, is that once you get into medical school, there's always passing that year's exams and then the year after that and then doing postgraduate exams and then applying for the next job. So the competition doesn't stop. Um, however, going on to the positives next. I mean, it's not all doom and gloom. It is a very rewarding career. Um, certainly have enjoyed it massively and, and had a great time. There's immense job security. Actually, I would say one of the highest in the world. I mean, as you can see, we, we're, we're in a pandemic at the moment and our job demand has, has gone up 
so much and there's huge job security there. Huge opportunity for research as well to innovate and to do new things. Always, always need that. And of course, the ability to make a massive impact on um, on people's lives. And that that is sort of the main reason why why a lot of us have applied for it. And also good flexibility. So once you're at quite a senior level, you have good flexibility in terms of when you want to work, where you want to work, and you can be your own boss, you know, um, and that is something that comes but after a while. A couple of the girls are asking, Bouquet, if you have any free time to pursue hobbies, games and things like that as well. Yeah, so I do. I do have hobbies and free time. Um, at the moment, it's been quite hectic with obviously everything going on. Um, but definitely you do. So the way the way your patterns work uh, as a junior doctor, you're quite you're quite protected. So you're not you know gone are the days of working 72 hour shifts in the hospital uh, that that doesn't happen anymore um you work set patterns and you're given um you're, you're legally obliged to have um have time off um and actually it, it's fine you know in the end it and, and yeah you are you do have time for that So specialities, um, so many, that there are so many and there really, I think is everything, it is something for everyone. This came from a specific request from someone prior to you, this rather than just desire yeah. to write on every specialty in medicine. Just Well, just exactly, <laughs> yeah, I know, no, someone did ask about this. So yeah, there's so many really, honestly. Um, and the great thing is if you like surgery and you like medicine, you can do a job that combines both or if you just like surgery then you know you can do the very surgical specialities I mean it's yeah it's, it's so varied. One of the things I'll, I'll, I'll do ladies as part of the follow-up is to share that specialty list specifically so you can refer to it again if you want to give us a chance to have a bit of a google and understand a bit more about I'm not I was going to try and say the one just above paediatric surgery but I I don't think I can um Bouquet, you probably can Otto Rhino Laryngology. There you go. <laughs> ENT, basically. No one, no one says that. Everyone just says ENT. Understandably. Um, one girl's just asking, of all these so far, because obviously in general medicine at the moment, what's your favourite speciality at the moment? So my favourite speciality is dermatology. So I like skin and that is what I want to do. Um, so yeah, dermatology for me. So that's that's there in the bottom left. And uh, this is this isn't something that you you have to, you have to rush. I mean, once you get into medical school, you'll get a feel of things, and you will you will know what what's right for you. Fantastic. Getting work experience. We we touched on this before. I do think it's hard. Definitely, I think this is. I think this was probably one of the hardest things that I found, and I'm I'm sure that it might be the same for you guys as well. There is the work, virtual work experience, which I know people are doing. Emailing around departments, that can be a bit hit and miss um, as well, but can, if it works, works really well. Visiting departments, obviously we can't do that at the moment with everything going on. Um, and also asking around your network, asking us, asking your school as well. Brilliant, thank you. And as I said, we have as a network, the girls network, we've got a specific link to ask NHS careers about the pandemic response to work experience. Now I'll make sure that's covered in the follow up following on from this workshop ladies. So you will get some specific information on that. Questions from everyone. Um, so was it, was it hard to get into medicine as a woman and, and how did I do it? Actually what I'd say is that and, and now we have some quite good data on this is that the majority of uh, medical graduates are actually women. Um, so more, definitely more than 50%. And I would say the challenges are the challenges are, are, are the same um, for for both. Uh, and it either way, it's difficult. It's difficult. However, even if you don't get in first time, 
um, there is always another another chance. I know quite a few doctors now who are actually incredibly successful, you know, very senior and, and very successful in their careers who actually didn't get into medicine the first time around, which looking at them, you would be so surprised. Um, so do not despair at that. How to prepare for a career in medicine. I think the most important thing is to do your work experience and speak to doctors and put yourself in their shoes and, and be in that environment. Actually, that's one of the best ways to know. But like I said, your interests might change as, as you get older and that's, that's okay, really. Other ways to prepare is obviously to get your grades as well. That is really important in order to get in. And also make sure that you're, you're well-rounded and, and showing the interviewers that actually, you know, you're not just um, very academic, that you have hobbies, that you've done well in other things. Um, lots of people, for example, you know, are captain of a sports team or, you know, enjoying um, music and things like that. I think also to kind of reflect on an earlier question something we kept talking about with regard to the personal statement is you know one of the things about being part of the girls network is you can get support from your mentor with things like that and they'll be able to give you some perspectives on yourself that you, you may not have noticed and help you to recognize some of the skills that you do have so that's a really useful extra tool in your armory that other people might not have so reflecting on that opportunity I think is really really important and as I'm sure your network managers have told you many many times in terms of making connections and if you're thinking how do I find a doctor to speak to? You know, we're, we're going to obviously give you some specific guidance on the virtual uh, work experience because we've got NHS careers helping us with that. But as a network, we are here to help. You know, Dr. Bucat's here this evening because she wants to support you guys. And there are lots of amazing women within the local networks you're working with as well who can do the same thing. So ask us. If we don't know the answer, we will probably know someone who will. Absolutely. I think um, one thing to add to that, um, Rosalind, that's a really good point, is that um, the most important thing actually is that you want it. And I think I will, I will come on to that actually, is that once you know you want something, actually getting there, it, things fall into place. And um, ask us, we're here to support you. I'm here to support you. So, so please do ask and, and we'll find a way. But also importantly, you need to put in the work as well and look things up and um, just, just show your energy, show your enthusiasm and, and you will definitely get in. So my, my next principle, Dr. Bouquet's principles, uh, principle three, never give up. So like I said, you might fail, you might fail things, you might not do as well as you'd hoped, but that's okay. That is part of it. And that is part of the learning process. And actually, what I would say is failure is actually a good thing because it teaches you what you need to change and what you need to get better at. And people can doubt you or you can even doubt yourself. And that's normal. That's OK. And that's part of the process. So this is my last slide. So you can do it if I could do it then you all can for sure you're all bright clever young women and you know you can definitely get into medicine if you want to thank you so much i think there's gonna be quite a few other questions popping through just now but i'm just gonna raise one with you now it was asking a question about whether or not you can have psychology a level and still apply to medicine and i just responded saying yes as long as you've got the other required grades but to sort of reflect on what you said before there is degree of variation between different medical schools as to what they require so there is just a, just some research to be done there um one thing i'm not sure of and you might know is there sort of one website like the bma or something where they actually list what different medical schools are after yes i think there should be so when i did it there was some very useful websites that just kept updating things instead of going to all the different medical school websites. So yes, there will be. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll have a look and see if that, that exists. If any of you know that it exists, do, do send that in to us. But um, definitely, I mean, there are, there are only 52 med medical schools in the UK. So, <laughs> you know, there is a set number.
Brilliant. And another question, someone wants to know, what's the most stressful part of your job? That's a really good question. And uh, thank you for asking that. I think um, sometimes I think I'm quite scared of being too negative about it because I don't want to put you off. But that's exactly what people did to me. They they were quite negative and, and tried to put me off, but I wasn't put off. Um, I think the most stressful part I would say is probably, I mean, there's quite a few, definitely. I would say the hardest part is probably being really busy um, and balancing many things, especially at work. Um, for example, you might get posted onto a new ward and or a new department and get to know everything there. It takes time. It's stressful to get to know um, different people or different, you know, computer systems and then things break down. It's just, it's very sort of sometimes quite chaotic. So I think that's one thing that's quite stressful. Um, the second thing I would say is that's stressful is probably trying to have some sort of work-life balance whilst doing this job. <laughs> I would say it's hard because you work long hours and you get home and you're tired and you, you want to sleep, but actually you need to study or you need to do something else or reply to an email. That's also quite stressful is, is doing that. Um, but it's somehow, you know, you, you get through it and you, you, things just get better. I mean, I think the key thing here is that, um, that, that's normal to have that level of sort of discomfort in the beginning, it, but it gets better because you get better at things. And that's how you know that you're improving is it starts off really hard and then, you know, it's easy. Like things that were really hard to me two years ago and now I'm just, you know, I don't sweat it, so. And on the other side of that coin, someone else would like to know, um, what is the best thing about your job? And I'm going to stop screen sharing as well because we have come to the final slide. <laughs> yeah. So the best thing about my job, I would say, there are so many things. Um, it's, it's very hard to give just one. I would say the best thing is probably the impact that you make on patients' lives and how, um, you know, you really get to be involved in such a, an important part of their lives and they you know they're some they're really grateful for this and um you know it's really humbling to to be a part of that then just a couple of other questions so one girl's um, are asking would you mind saying which hospital you're currently based in so it's fine if you don't want to say i'm so i'm currently at the moment working in a few different places um both inside and outside of london um so sort of in different places really okay and rather brilliantly one of the ladies in the call has found the pdf that we all need to find out the medical requirements for all of the medical schools in the uk so congratulations here, which well i will done. show everybody after so that's that problem well solved and just a couple more questions yeah, just um, a couple of people actually asking, it, it, you know, are some medical schools better than others? Are the London ones better than others or does it not quite work that way? This is a really interesting point. Thanks for bringing that up. What I would say to you is that at the end of at the end of your medical school career, everyone goes to do the same job. And you all start off at the same pay grade, the same you know, largely the same jobs, you do the same thing for your foundation years. So actually what I would say is, yes, perhaps some universities are more prestigious than others. Um, however, that to me, that doesn't matter. To me, it's about the other things. Um, you know, do you want to, for example, do you want to be close to home? Do you want to be, where do you want to live? Uh, do you want to go to a new city? Those sorts of things I think are, are more important because ultimately, everyone kind of ends up at the same place and actually you only figure that out afterwards. Brilliant, thank you so much. That's the last of the questions coming through just now. As I've got my two lovely colleagues on the call, I will take the opportunity to ask if they've got any questions that they've been pondering as well, just so you can hear someone other than me speaking. <laughs> and me. <laughs> 
I was just going to ask Ross, um, if you could send around the link to the um, website with all the grades. I absolutely will. I'll stick it in the chat for everyone to see now, but I'm also, I'll put it in the, in the follow-up tomorrow. I'm going to do one of those nice Canva follow-up things. Awesome. Amazing. And I did have one question about um, uh, other routes into, into medicine, you know, can, um, can people do different degrees first and, and then go into medicine perhaps a bit later? What are the other routes into, into that career? Absolutely, really good question. There are, I know several people who have done so many different things. Um, I think at my medical school, we had a man who had had a, a 20 year law career, um, very successful, top of his field. And, you know, he was sat there in the lecture theatre with us. So, you know, he, you know, even he, he did a medical degree. So um, you can definitely do that. I think there are prerequisites though. For example, you do need to have a basic uh, sort of understanding of biology and chemistry and that, but I think that you can do through courses. So that's something to look into, but I do know it's possible, yes. That's really helpful, thank you. That's all of my questions actually. I think the last thing I would say is, um, so when I was going through the process, I had, two other students, so two other friends with me who were, we, so we were all sort of going through the process together and we, the three of us actually really helped each other with studying and with other things and applying and questions. So I would say probably between yourselves, or I don't know if the, the girls network can arrange this, but to have like a groups amongst yourselves to ask questions and how, how are you doing this? How are you doing that? And to work together because ultimately there are enough places for all of you if you want it. So, you know, I think that's important. I think something we speak about as a network a lot is, is you know, really using that network effect, not just keeping it, you know, the relationship to mentor mentee is, is fabulous, but there is there is more than that. So that's something I think we do emphasize quite, quite, a, quite a lot. So I think we've got one more question which is just a couple of girls wondering if you if you ever wish you'd taken another degree or course. That's a really good question. I would say um, when I'm having a bad day, yes, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Sometimes it's really hard and you're just thinking, gosh, wow. But that's not always. And um, Overall, I would say that I, I enjoy what I do, but there are times when, when you do think, you know, you, you could have, I could have done so many other things as well. Um, so I think it just comes down to just making sure that, you know, you, you have the work experience and that you've, you've done the preparation. But like I said, even if you do change your mind in the future, I mean, even now for me, I, you know, if I decided that I didn't like it, and I have colleagues like this who, you know, decide they want to do something else and they, they go and work in the city or they, you know, do something totally different. I think I had, I think I had a friend of a friend who went up and opened a coffee shop, you know, so you can just do so many things. So. Thank you. That's really, really helpful. Um, and thank you so much, Piquet. You've been really, really honest and balanced in everything you said and given some great information. And I think I've got a really good list of things to share with the girls afterwards. But I think for now, we are kind of running out of, out of time for this particular session. So ladies, if there's any last minute questions, this is your opportunity. But equally, if you need to dial off, then it's absolutely fine to, to say, say goodbye now. I think one of the key things that I really liked was your principle three, Dr. Bouquet. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think as, as you know, women and girls, are hopefully, hopefully lots of the girls here don't have this, um, but women and girls are often prone to lacking confidence sometimes in themselves and that can be a huge barrier. So it's really important to just give it a go and take a shot. Absolutely, absolutely. It's almost another topic in itself um, that I, I love talking about. But yeah, I mean, definitely. There are a couple of more questions coming in if you're happy to. Of course. Answer. Brilliant. So uh, one question is, uh, what's your motivation? What's kept you going? 
Wow, <laughs> these are really great questions, guys. Oh, aren't they? I'm really impressed. Um, it's like a mini interview. Well, definitely. Well, the My next question is asking how your interview went at UCL, so we'll get to that shortly. <laughs> well, exactly. Um, my motivation and what keeps me going. I would say that I've, I've always, I think I've always been someone that's been quite internally driven and wants to always be good at what I do. Um, I think that's something that's come from inside. And I would say quite a typical sort of type A personality. I don't know if you know about the type A and type B personalities, but, um, you know, I've always been that kind of person. And um, that's partly what's kept me motivated. But I think over the years, what I found is I found ways to kind of um, probably to uh, work with that and sort of sometimes just yeah j just to, to work with that um so I would say what motivates me so many things but I would say to to be good at what I do and to be to be driven and to um create something that's that's useful to people fantastic and another lady wants to know um how was the interview at UCL the interview at UCL actually went well um I remember going in and my interviewers were so nice so lovely and I think that they yeah they were really fair in what they asked it was it was the standard questions really why do you want to do medicine um what tell us about your work experience you know very standard things it was really fair actually and it, and I walked out thinking yeah that went well brilliant have you heard of any any of your friends or colleagues who got some odd questions at their interviews? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's hard to bring up an example, but for sure, I think maybe some of the sort of some strange ones in terms of you know abstract things. I can't I can't think of any examples, but definitely people who've had some weird questions. But generally, not to scare you, generally they're all they're fairly you know the same i did a degree in philosophy so i got weird questions that would were, were just weird um but that's <laughs> i think sometimes they do that to to either throw you off a little bit or just to hear your thought process really sometimes well i walked into an interview room with a man who he just said to me this isn't my cat what shall i do now and i was like right uh, <laughs> <laughs> You should return the cat. <laughs> it's very, very strange. Anyway, so I'm just going to quickly scan through the chat and make sure I haven't missed any questions. A few people have asked about work-life balance, but I think you've, you've already spoken about that um, a couple of times. Motivation. Um, I'm not seeing any questions here that we haven't covered already elsewhere. So I think, unless there's anything new that anyone wants to pop into the chat now. I, I think there's a quest there was a question about um do did do I have spare time or was I quite stressed about the whole whole process? Yeah, that was sort of work life balance and so yeah. if, if you want to talk talk about that in more detail, do you go I ahead. Think, um I think I do remember being stressed out about it. But like I said, I you know that that's part of the process and you are obviously going through something that's it's quite a big deal. I mean, you know, deciding on, you know, where you want to go to uni for six years I mean it is a big deal definitely at the time it can feel quite stressful I think the thing I would say to that is that definitely make sure that you are keeping up with your hobbies and seeing your friends and exercising to make sure you balance all of that stuff because don't just work 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 or you know stay stressed out about that brilliant so just having another double check but no more new questions coming through. But it's great that you're all still here. So clearly you're enjoying what Vika has to say, which is a fantastic thing. Thanks everyone. So lovely to have you all here. And I hope we can um, help you all with, with this. Oh, there was one more actually that I missed and has been asked before, which was, can you specialize in more than one thing? Apologies, I missed that one earlier. Yes, you actually can now. You can specialize in um, for example, in medicine, you can do something called dual speciality. 
So you can do, you can specialize in both general medicine and for example, uh, rheumatology or general medicine and you know something else that they're quite similar but but you can yes and also having said that there are people who do one career and then for example people who do surgery and then end up going into something completely different all the other way around I mean it does happen fantastic I'm just quickly answering a different question I think no more no more coming through just now so we'll, yes, we'll, end, we'll end the call now yeah. for everyone um thank you so much Dr Biquette for your time um and we'll send through some uh some follow-up emails and information Thanks, everyone um I hope you're all having a lovely half term though I'm very jealous school holiday <laughs> bye everybody bye, everyone thank you Thank you.